Ephesians chapter 6, through the Bible. Part 10. The fiery darts of the wicked. He is shooting them fast and furiously. I remember that when I was in college, I had a brilliant philosophy professor who had studied in Germany. I respected his intellect, although I didn't realize at the time that he was intellectually dishonest. I looked up to him, but, very frankly, he was taking my feet out from under me. I would try to answer him in class when I probably should have kept my mouth shut. But we became friends, and we used to walk together across the campus after class and discuss the questions I had raised. I came to the place where I went to the Lord in prayer and said, Lord, if I can't believe your word, I don't want to go into the ministry. Then the Lord in a very miraculous way sent me to hear a man who was the most brilliant man, I think, whom I have ever heard. He gave me the answer to my questions. Then I began to learn that when a fiery dart comes my way and I don't have the answer, I am to put up the shield of faith. And this is what I have been doing ever since. I have found that the shield of faith has batted down the fiery darts of the wicked one. I remember that I was upset about questions concerning the Genesis record of creation. I was ready to get out of the ministry because I couldn't accept certain things. The problem was not with my pygmy intellect, although I thought it was at the time. I just didn't know enough. So I put up the shield of faith. Someone was walking with me in Israel as we were observing some excavations. He asked me, Suppose they dig up something down there that looks like it disproves the Bible. What position would you take? I answered, I would put up the shield of faith, and that would bat down the fiery darts of the wicked one. I have learned that when a fiery dart is batted down, I will get the correct answer later on. I remember a time when the authorship of John was being questioned. Was the Gospel of John written by John? Today, it is pretty well established that John was the writer, but at one time I had questions about it. The fiery darts of the wicked one come fast and furiously, and they are going to continue to come. The only thing that will bat them down is this shield of faith. It is like a big door. The hoplites, the heavily armed soldiers in the Greek infantry, could move with those tremendous shields, put them out in front of them and stand protected shoulder to shoulder, while the enemy shot everything they had at them. When the enemy was out of ammunition, they would move in, certain of victory. That is the way to stand against the fiery darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet protects the head, and God does appeal to the mind of man. I recognize that he appeals to the heart, but God also appeals to the intellect. Throughout the scriptures God uses reason with man. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool, Isaiah 1 verse 18. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for the Acts 24 verse 25. Paul reasoned with Felix. He appealed to the mind of the man as well as to his heart. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10 verse 17. A theology professor who was a liberal said many years ago when I was a student, faith is a leap in the dark. That is not true. God does not ask you to take a leap into the dark. In fact, God says if it is a leap in the dark, don't take it. God wants you to leap into the light. God has a solid foundation for you, and how wonderful it is. Christ is the salvation of the sinner. He is the one to receive the glory in it all. That plume on the top of the helmet is Christ. He has been made unto us salvation. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1 verse 21. Even before his birth in Bethlehem, he was marked out as the Savior. 
Paul mentions this helmet in connection with salvation again in another epistle. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 8. All the parts of the armor mentioned so far have been for defense. Have you noticed that? Everything is for the front of the individual. There is no protection for his back. Nothing is provided for retreat. Believe me, a retreating Christian is certainly open season for the enemy. The enemy can get through to him. Now we have two weapons for offense. The first one is the Word of God, called the Sword of the Spirit. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4 verse 12 Christ is the living Word of God. He used the Word of God to meet Satan in the hour of his temptation. Out of his mouth goeth a sharp two-edged sword in the battle of Armageddon. Revelation 1 verse 16 1921 He gains the victory with that sword. What is it? It is the Word of God. We need that sharp sword going out of our mouths today. The Word of God is a powerful weapon of offense. You and I are to use it. Our second weapon of offense is prayer. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit is not turning in a grocery list to God. It means that you and I recognize our enemy and that we lay hold of God for spiritual resources. We lay hold of God for that which is spiritual that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul here distinguishes between prayer and supplication. Prayer is general. Supplication is specific. All effective prayer must be in the Spirit. 